Hey folks, Dr. Mike Isretel here for Renaissance Periodization. In our bullshit series, here's the next video, Rapid Weight Loss When You're Trying to Get Long-Term Results. Here we go. Rapid weight loss is not always bad. First, there's a small fraction of people for whom rapid weight loss, defined here as greater than 1% of your weight loss on average per week over multiple weeks, actually results in a long-term sustained keeping the weight off and staying healthy. However, a very likely larger fraction of people doesn't do well with that hardly at all. Second, bodybuilders use things like mini cuts, intentionally rapid, super fast paced weight loss to engineer a purposeful rebound effect back to an even higher body weight after. That's actually the one of the main purposes of the mini cut is to rebound you back into higher levels of body weight by priming your hunger, et cetera, et cetera. So yes, there are reasons to do rapid weight loss, but in most cases, if your goal is long-term weight loss, getting down to a healthy weight and keeping it off, rapid has some really, really bad things going for it. Because it has bad things going for it, and because there's such a high chance of that slingshot effect, that yo-yo effect, you guys see my yo-yo? What do people do with their fingers with the yo fucking yo-yo? Yo-yos were cool, like when I arrived to America in 1991, they were really cool. And I, I, think, I think I got one and I just was never athletic enough to use it. How's that for low athleticism? Thanks, Jewish genetics. In any case, people will yo-yo and when most people try rapid weight loss, they do exactly what bodybuilders do on purpose, but by accident. They start at 200 pounds, they go down to 190 over the course of three weeks. They get to a party, they binge, it's all over, and they're at 203 pounds a few weeks later. So if you want to rock it back up again, ultra rapid weight loss is a good idea. If you don't, it might not be a good idea. There are other reasons why dieting it between half a percent of your weight per week and 1% is probably better for most people. For example, if you weigh 200 pounds, that's losing between one pound and two pounds per week of body weight. That offers some really good advantages. First, it helps reduce crazy hunger and cravings that much faster diets absolutely encourage much more. It helps you avoid poor sleep. If you cut the deficit a ton, your sleep goes to hell. That automatically means you start losing muscle, gaining fat, all this crazy stuff happens. Stress goes through the roof. It's all, it's all bad. You have ultra low energy with ultra rapid diets that you don't get nearly the same extent with a more easy paced diet. You can have trouble concentrating at work or at school, which is no good because like that's really how you get money and or education to be able to do this crap anyway. So if that's, you know, shooting yourself in the foot, that's a really bad deal. And a lot of time, if you go ultra hard, a super fast weight loss diet, it can sap you of your motivation to keep going such that as soon as the diet is over, you're not like, all right, I'm going to intelligently select foods and count my macros and use my RP Diet Coach app to get on maintenance and follow the track and never regain the weight. You're much more likely so fucking done with the shit that you're like, I don't give a fuck anymore, man. I just suffered like crazy. I deserve a bunch of junk food and voila, you're back up to your old weight by losing weight at a slower pace, half a percent to a full percent per week, as opposed to a percent and higher for most people, is just better because it avoids all those very, very bad things. Successful weight loss is sustainable weight loss. I'm going to be completely clear straight up with you guys. Anytime someone says, I lost, insert weight in, insert short time frame. I lost 50 pounds in four months with the dildo diet. It's a great diet. Honestly, if I'm with you and I'm chatting with you and you're a human being, I'm going to be like, that's awesome. And I'm, I'm super happy for you. And then I'll probably thread into that discussion, like a talk about how important maintenance is, because that's where most people fail. A lot of people can actually hack a diet, but they fucking just shoot back up. Very few people can hack a diet to get down to a weight and then stay down there. And real talk, if you're not a human being, and I just hear somewhere about the fact that you lost a bunch of weight, people are proud of you. I couldn't give a flying fuck. That shit does not impress me. And it shouldn't impress you. Why? It's the fraction of people that rebound back, depending on how you ask the question from a research perspective, is something like one in four to like 
Oh, sorry, rebound back up. I said it the other way. Somewhere between three and four people and nine and 10 people come right back up to their old body weight within several weeks or months of having lost the weight initially. So when people are like, I lost 50 pounds doing the whatever diet, I'm not impressed with that shit much. I'm not impressed with the diet because almost any diet that cuts calories can get you to lose weight. But if that diet does so in a stupid fucking way, and it's way too fast or it's way too restrictive, it builds zero habits for you to keep after you're done dieting. You're just going to go back up like almost everyone else. And then what do you have? Was that the, there was like a really cool fridge magnet I saw once at a friend's house that said, uh, I did a diet for a month and lost 30 days. <laughs> 30 days of great eating. You could have just not fucking bothered with that shit. Could have just stayed off the diet. Would have been the same weight two months later, but you lost weight for a month, came back up after a month, and you're just the same place you always were, except with one month extra misery and with one month of disappointment in yourself. Fuck all that, right? If you're dieting to get the weight off for long term, you got to think a little bit more calmly and slowly about what is the kind of diet practice that's going to get me to my destination, but also let me chill. Let's say going camping and eating all your food that you planned for camping, like by the time you get to the site and you're like, I'm here. People are like, how's camping? You're like, it's over. You got to go back, eat all the food. It doesn't make any, any fucking sense. You got to think it through a little bit more. Which begs the question, why do people do rapid fat loss diets so often only to balloon back up in most cases? A couple things. First, the old adage, fools run in or angels fear to tread. I always found this a very curious, I never looked in to the history of where this uh, statement came from, but a couple things always pop up in my head when I hear this. Um, are angels the antithesis of fools? I didn't know the angels were like super intelligent. I just thought they were like good or had wings. Dressed in white, had halos. The halos are really fucking sweet. Uh, mostly because Dragon Ball Z had the halos. So uh, yeah, uh, I guess, you know, without digging into that statement, an obsessive amount, dumb people do dumb shit. Classic human psychological observation. It's a thing, right? And... There's a reason they do it because at the at the end, you know, someone says, hey, look, like you have to suffer. Dieting sucks. You're like, okay, you can suffer for two months, oh, but bear with me. You can suffer for four months. A lot of people are like, it's going to be hard either way, right? And the person, even if they're truthful, like, well, yeah. They're like, fuck that. Let me get the quick one. But the problem is the quick one gets the suffering over with faster, but probability of you ballooning back up also goes up. So it's a really big yin and yang there, right? People think I'll just get this over with quickly and be done. And um, that logic has limits, you know? You don't apply it to every other area of your life. Like, you know, you're not like, oh yeah, I should leave for work at 11, but I'll leave at 11.10 uh, because I'll just go 140 miles an hour down the freeway. I'll be over with real quick. I hate driving. I might as well drive really fast. Like, you know, there's downsides with that. Like you could crash, kill yourself, a whole bunch of other people. That's the thing you have to think about. In the dieting world, you can crash. Hopefully, you don't kill anybody else unless they have an ice cream cone you want and they're not willing to give it to you. But uh, yeah, you can, you know, just give yourself a huge pain in the ass and just regaining the weight. And a lot of people that regain the weight, they end up being down on themselves and their self-efficacy for future diets drops, which is to say that they're like, man, I just, it's, I just don't work for me. I'm not that person. A lot of people have given up on their fitness. Because what they think is fitness is this insane psychotic clown diet, which strips all their nutrients away and makes them lose a crap load of weight, makes them ultra hungry and they rebound. And it's like, well, if this is fitness, I can't hack it. But a slower, calmer, more intelligent guided approach can result in amazing things. They just don't know about it or looked at it and they're like, man, fuck that. That's too involved. But here's the thing. If you really want to lose a bunch of fat, get healthier, look better, et cetera, maybe it's a serious goal to you. And if it's serious, it requires a serious amount of diligence, right? Like if I work for some advertising company and like, hey, like you got to make some billboard art for Coca-Cola, hey, Coca-Cola is probably a really big contract. You know, I'm not going to just put some shit together in 20 minutes. I'm going to think long and hard about that shit because I want that contract money to keep coming in. It's a serious task. It requires me to think seriously, be patient and calm and do the right thing for the long term. No quick fixes. Quick fixes in general just suck more. Uh, the benefit is that they're quick. But where the fuck are you rushing? And that's my kind of a really big question is when people say, uh, I want to lose this weight really quick. I, I used to be a personal trainer for a long time. And people would come into the gym and say, hey, like I weigh, I weigh 200 pounds. I want to be 150. I want to get it off as fast as possible. And I was always stuck. And I never said this to anyone. But I always wanted to be like, 
Do you think you're, to paraphrase uh, economist philosopher Thomas Sowell, do you think you're among the first million people that had the idea that you wanted this weight off immediately? Like my wife says, you know, I wanted it off yesterday, but we don't have a fucking time machine. Don't be so audacious to think like, oh, I'll just get it off as quick as possible. There are trade-offs to that. Getting it off really quick as possible, but the probability that it comes back on is now much higher. It is in your best interest if you're very serious about losing the fat and keeping it off, to do it slow, to do it right, to do it properly, to take breaks when needed, etc. Because some people, instead of engineering their lives to get long-term results that last, fuck all that engineering, they take me open a little pouch and sprinkle a little bullshit in. And that never tastes that good. See you guys next time.